Right, we're moving on now to Daily Sun. Omicron, UK makes U-turn on travel ban. Talked about that earlier. Chinese COVID-19 vaccines to be produced in Nigeria soon, says Envoy. Protest rocks Anambra community over monarch's abduction. Nigeria's debt hit 38.005 trillion naira, says DMO. Oyotala, Nigeria's only large-scale commercial gold mine is in Oshun. And DSS warns sponsors of kidnapping and banditry. Okay. So let me uh, take Anambra. the debt profile. Which one? Uh, debt profile, Nigeria debt profile. Okay. So organization, organized private sector yesterday raised the alarm over a rising debt, which now stands at 38 trillion naira, according to our debt management office. And it says um, the total public debt rose from 7.2 percent on quarter uh, on quarter to 38 trillion as of September 30, 2021, from the data that they recovered. This is scary. Hmm. The details of how we borrowed over the years have been taken, and it was also in this report. But we have justification for what we claim to for why we borrow. Yes, so yes. residents and uh, leaders of Ogwa and Yocha community in Ogwaru local government area of Anambra State yesterday staged a peaceful protest over the abduction of their traditional ruler, Igwe Oliver Naji. So they carried uh, placards with inscriptions asking the governor, Governor Willie Obiano, to find a way to rescue the, um, the Igwe Oliver Naji. And um, according to the, the spokesperson and president, President General of the community, Mr. Chid Eze, he fingered uh, a group known as the Lion Squad, uh, saying that the leader was the one that invaded the palace of Igwe Naji, abducted him on November 15th, and, uh, you know, burnt his vehicle and the house. I think about four vehicles were burnt and the house. They also fingered another person, another gang leader, trying to get the name here, and said that he also <laughs> should, Mr. Organa and his gang, uh, he already has been... Uh, I think he's in the custody of the police. They wanted him for alleged kidnapping and uh, some other offenses that he's committed. So they are saying that these are the two gangs that likely have kidnapped Igwe Naji. And so the governor needs to do something to rescue him. He's been in uh, detention for over 29 days. Something. In custody, right. I'll be abducted place for over mm. 29 days now. And okay, uh, there's I no have... whereabouts. Yes. So ahead. the Go National ahead. Assembly... Um, says it's not, on, it's not going to go on a war path with the president concerning the um, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. So we know um, that bill has been sent to the president for his assent, and there's a, usually a 30-day period in which the president is supposed to have signed that, and he hasn't done that yet. And uh, one of the reasons they're saying this may uh, be stalling is because governors are prevailing on the president not to sign the bill in view of the provision where it says that there will be direct primaries. So m many governors are not in support of that. Um, the uh, National Assembly is saying, see, whatever happens, when the president takes the decision, whatever the generality of the National Assembly thinks, we will all know. And I think it's too early to seek to put us on a war path <coughs> with the right. president. And they're saying our decisions are really taken not on the basis of partisan consideration, but on the basis of general consideration of the people. So this is an answer to people who are saying, you know, um, the National Assembly is um, a rubber stamp for the government. And they're saying mm. if it's a rubber stamp, if um, doing what the people want means being a rubber stamp for right. the government, then we are. But we're not just going to go into war path with when we have other yeah. ways to... But fundamentally, it. the president has said at least it's going to cost a lot of money to take this route. So somebody needs to let us know how much it's going to cost and who's going to pay for it. I think that's, that will solve the problem instead of the back and forth. Um, I was going to tell you a story about DSS. So DSS, through the media, is talking to kidnappers. Okay. Dr. Afnaya, <laughs> who is a spokesperson for the DSS, is warning sponsors yeah. of kidnapping, banditry, terrorism, insurgency, and other vices to desist from their act. I hope the media gets the message to them. It says... Um, yes, you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that he's warning them to try to tell them all kinds of attacks on security agents, civilians, and vulnerable politicians. Would, should, they should have a rethink that they will not tolerate all that attack on citizens. And I also wanted those of us traveling during this July season to be very, very security conscious, you know, because these uh, people are on the road, obviously, and it's called on parents and guardians to be watchful of their children and wards and students to returning home for the July tide season. He said he's giving advice is necessary for subversive and gangs, gangs who could target and um, all this undesirable intents. He also, they also uh, warned um, hoteliers. 
mm. and people who manage recreational parks to be very careful to watch on suspecting or suspicious persons that come around the area because you never yes, can you tell. never know. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Moving on now to Vanguard, OPS raises alarm as Nigeria's debt hits 38 trillion era. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Yes, yeah. We won't go to war with Buhari over electro bills. I think we mentioned that early. Gridlock turns, returns to mile two as commuters, drivers lament. 14 born to death in Bayosa auto crash. Ooh. NSA lists three Islamic sponsors for terror groups in Nigeria. UK removes Nigeria from travel lists, from travel <laughs> red list. And 2021, against all odds, CBN weather storm. Okay, which story haven't we taken? Good luck headline. in Maltu quickly. Which um, one? Mm. Um, good luck in Maltu. Okay. So, the inward from Oshodi towards uh, Mapapa at Maltu is, was crazy traffic for the past two days. I think starting on Monday was seriously hell, hellish to drive through that route. And I don't want to believe, like the Vanguard reported, that it was just because they opened the median so that cars turning towards um, Oshodi would just take the U turn in front of customs there. No, I don't believe that because I think the pre gates, the traffic went all the way into Amor Dauphin on, on Monday. So the pre gates business and, you know, a papa port business is why we have such traffic. Yes, cars will turn. People are trying to access the um, sand farms in Kirikiri to pick up fuel, but then. That's pregate activity because that U-turn is comfort for some people. That you know, instead of just sitting in traffic and escorting tankers the way to, all the way to Kiriki, you have an exit. So proper traffic management. But the report also says that there was an abandonment of um, traffic duties by traffic uh, management agencies in that area at 4:30. An area boys took over. Yes, that's possible. That can happen in the evening. But in the mornings when I drive, I see them. Walking as he just needs to clear traffic in that area. Mm, yes. yes, no, the last man. The last man yeah. They are there every morning, and on my way back in the afternoon, I still wave at some of them if I had to turn or do something again in okay. that area. So yeah, uh, okay, so uh, 14 Papa persons were reportedly burned to death in an auto crash near Sampo community on the Bielsa stretch of the East West Road, Yenagua. And um, according to the reports, they said um, it involved a Toyota Hairs bus and also a black Lexus SUV. So I think one of the vehicles were coming from Lagos, the other from Delta State, and they collided. According to the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRSC, they said the crash occurred about 5 p.m. and it was uh, caused by wrongful overtaking and overspeeding. So immediately that accident happened, um, the bus caught fire and 14 persons were not able to be identified at all. Mm. They were burnt. Um, uh, I think about uh, two persons were taken to the hospital. Then the other car, the driver was just sustained minor injuries. He's also been taken to the hospital. And they're asking, this is the Yuletide season. We need to be very careful how we overtake, how we drive on, especially the express roads. OK, let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. In security, northern governors meet Buhari. DSS raises um, alarm over alleged plots to destabilize Nigeria. Don't force us. To choose the um, strike as option, Asu tells FG. Oshun ready to partner responsible investors in gold mining. Nobody took Oshun State here. Uh, I won't turn down calls to run for president, says 2023, says Tinumbu. Or your assembly wants Mackinde to urgently release grants to school. And uh, UK removes Nigeria 10 <coughs> orders from red list. Okay. Yeah, so I have the um, Northern Governors meeting with the president. Uh, these were Governors Aminu Musari, Abdullah Isile, Darius Ishaku uh, of Katsina, Nasara, and Taraba states. And really, they were talking about just the insecurity in their states. Um, with the Governor of Katsina state, I mean, he was asked questions after the meeting. He says, well, he just wanted to, uh, you know, talk about the level of insecurity in the north and also how it is important for the northern governors to come together to um, work um, to work towards, you know, um, insecurity in the region. And he um, was asked about his commissioner that was recently killed. And he says, well, that particular case is not a case of banditry because it was more like an assassination because nothing was taken from the person of the commissioner. He says, and we know that banditry, they will come and take um, things as well. Uh, and he also mentioned that... Um, Security agents have, you know, sort of upped their game, that they've done a comparative analysis since um, the security agencies have, you know, 
re relaunch some of their operations and they can say that there's been an improvement. Definitely they are not completely, you know, out of, you know, the red zone yet, but there's definitely an improvement. Um, Pre um, Go Governor of Taraba State, um, he says that he just went to tell the president about the um, attack by, um, you know, on the community that borders um, Taraba State and Cameroon and give the president an update. Uh, Governor of Sokoto State had also met with him earlier, and um, Niger State in particular has said that um, uh, the renewed operations of security, op um, the security operatives has helped to stop some schools that were targeted. Um, they had found out that schools were targeted in that state and they were going to, you know, kidnap them, but because of the inte intelligence, that was um, stopped as well. He says also there is an improvement, but definitely there's still fighting against um, insecurity. So just an update of what's happening there yeah. and thanking the president for what he's doing so far, but a lot has needs to be done. A lot more needs to be done. So Asu, Asu had um, their zonal coordinator, zonal coordinator in Southwest meeting at um, Unabi, Nabiokuta, and they were talking about, according to their zonal coordinator, his name is um, Adelaja. Udukoya, he says that the um, federal government forced ASU to a nine-month strike in 2020. And because of their insensitive and lackadaisical attitude towards full implementation of the 20, 2009 ASU and federal government agreement, they might be forced to do that again. And so he's appealing to federal government to fulfill their own end of the agreement and not force ASU to that alternative because when, get, when push comes to shove, that last option might be, you know, explored. Okay, I think that's all we can take on the front page review. I was going yeah. to find out. Yeah, that's the story that sticks out. Yes, mm -hmm. we, the private sector of Ni organized private sector of Nigeria is talking about the increased taxes and tariffs that the federal government is discussing that you know we'll see more of in 2022, and says this is not really a good thing to do because what we'll see are some of the uh, fallout from that. Uh, there will be more. There will be higher unemployment. And the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria is saying, see, instead of adding more tariffs and taxes on Nigerians who are already, you know, going through a hard time, why don't you look towards reducing the cost of governance, you know, to generate income? That's basically all right. It. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So the ladies of your view and I don't want this issue of bullying to go away just like that because there are ripple effects, mm. long-term effects of this act on adults, even as of today. And yesterday we spoke about uh, bullying on the side of a parent mm. ha handling a child that bullies others and um, repercussions of that. But today we're going to take another angle. We'd like to open up our phone lines to those who have actually experienced bullying as children and share with us how that experience has affected your adult life and then your career, your relationships, your marriage, in, in your community. How has it affected you, especially in different areas of your own self, growth, inner growth, inner development? Many have complained that that, that act affected them in different ways. I'd like to open our phone lines. Please call us on 081 270 You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'd like to hear your thoughts because, as I said, we want to learn from each other. We want to understand the effects of this act and, and help those who may have bullied others and, and adults. Maybe some kind of restitution. Find the fact that what you did to some people still affected them to today. Maybe you don't understand how far your, your act had actually um, gone in their own life. So it's good for us to have this conversation sometimes. Call us on those numbers. I would love to hear from you. I don't know if we like to go with the uh, BC. People are adults already today, and many can, can almost trace their issue of self-esteem, their confidence, to the fact that somebody out there told them they were not good enough or made them feel low. Have you experienced it, or do you know of somebody who has experienced this? Of course I've experienced it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was bullied almost um, all my childhood days mm. till I got to a point where I had to reverse, I had to turn it. And that took a lot of courage and fight. 
which also affected me because the thing about bullying is there are three persons involved. The last guest we had on the show that talked about it, the hijab lady, very exceptional. Like I was, I was just listening because she was hitting it. There are three people involved when it comes to the case of bullying. The bully, the bullied, and the witness. And these three people are affected all through into their adult life, you know. So as a bully, you are coming from a place of selfishness, a place of uh, you're looking for power. You have narcissistic tendencies, and it starts really very early. And you want to show that I, I, I have power over this person. I can shut this person up. I can deal with this person and get away with it. That's one. The person who you are bullying now starts feeling uh, helpless. The person is feeling unseen. The person is feeling unloved. That affects the identity of that person till adulthood, where in every way you're relating with other people, you feel like you're helpless. You're not seen. You're not worth it. You don't have it. Then the victim, the, the witness, that's the third person who witnesses Best this, standard. finds a way to hide themselves from being seen. Mm. And that affects you into adulthood. You are consistently hiding yourself from you know, em em embracing all that you have. People tell you that you're good enough, and you're like, no, you're you not seeing me for real. I, I don't think I'm that good. Yeah. Because all over uh, your childhood years, you have tried to protect yourself mm. from bullying. You are trying to hide yourself, and it follows you. And what I tell people is, we need to start dealing with this issue of bullying from the home. It starts from the home. Because some of us, some of the ways we you know, relate to our children is as a result of what we have taken. The child's mind is absorbent. You have absorbed the impressions of people around you. And then you marry, and you see that you are trying to raise your children that way. You know, I remember there was a time I was beaten in school, and I went home. And my father said, who is the person that beat you? I described the person. That short girl, as tall as you are. You allow somebody to beat you. Go, he beat me and sent me back to school. Mm. to go. That was when I woke up and started mm. my own journey into mm. bullying mm. other people, mm. you know? So you were so bullied as well. Let me, let no, me. no, 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 I didn't bully in school, though. Let me, let me just do. realize that over the years as an adult, I became so not, I don't, I don't fight. So where is the line like between being a bully and being tough? Mm. I became mm. somewhat of a bully in the sense that I don't let you get to me. I am always very aggressive in handling issues. It's a way of protecting myself yeah. and building that wall yeah. because I don't want somebody else to take yeah. me for granted. That, that, that same experience that you described mm. happened exactly to my husband. Exactly the same thing. Somebody beat him up. <laughs> One little boy beat him up. He came home crying. Of course, his father was going, ah, what, what, what happened? They hold him to school. And then saw the child, this is very small. Wait, this is the one I beat you. Yeah, yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He won't say anything again. Just got home, called him, hmm. and warned him that when they beat you, you beat them back. You know, and he said that that was like a, yes, a, so a key. That changed that him. unlocked yeah. everything, that he now became a boy. Yeah. He was now beating That's what everybody, and he was just beating them up because it took a long time. For him to wake up and say, you know, I can't be just mm. fighting every day, fighting, 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 fighting. So when when your parent tells you, ah, why are you being you you must defend yourself, yes. must fight. You don't feel that they've given you that freedom to do so. So how and now those people would now grow up and say, ah, somebody beats me up. Yeah. And it will affect their personality and their their the, who they are today. How they see so themselves. I'll come to you, Mariam. What, what what was your experience like? And do you know of anybody else that it happened to? And what 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 is their adult like life? Day. I don't like I've today. never been, or I do not remember being directly bullied, but I have witnessed bullying. And um, I just knew to take myself away from, to protect myself, I knew to, I, I knew to read people quickly and also know how to take myself out of a situation that was unpleasant. So I knew I did not have the, the physical strength <laughs> to fight anyone. But so, and I knew that, and then there were some people who would just say things, you know, I went, you know, some, some of the bullying may not be physical, it may just be that they use really aggressive, hurtful right. words, uh, you know, uh, to describe you and to just, you know, make you feel really low. And so I knew quickly the sort of people that I wanted to be associated with, the sort of people I wanted to be in their midst, the sort of people, like when I see them, I just know that this is not my scene. And you know, one thing with this bullying, especially with the, the um, verbal one is that it does not stop in primary, secondary school. I saw people do it in university, yeah. and quickly I knew I could not be friends with them. So I think for me, it served as a, I quickly learned how to protect myself from from bullies in that way. I did not. I was careful not to like. Recently, I was talking to my son, and he says, uh, "I was like, when you say bully, 
you need to, when you see someone bullying someone else, you need to be able to stand up to that bully. And the bully will say, no, mommy, you need to learn to, um, to not get noticed. Hmm. So no, they don't see you. Because when they see you, you, draw, when you, he said, you need to learn not to draw attention to yourself. Because wow. when you draw attention to yourself, then they wow. want to, wow. you know, add you to, you know, bully you as well. Wow. So yes, I guess some people have learned that. But the failure to, um, for that to happen is that people, young and old, feel that there's no one they can speak to, someone of authority of greater strength that can step in for them. Because you have cases where you tell a parent, and the parent, even though the parent's trying to do um, right by you, makes the situation worse. Oh, how dare you report? Mm. And so because of that, not only I, but every one of us in this class, or all of us, this group of friends, will make sure that your life is miserable. So I think that's where bullies thrive. The fact that there's not a way that you can hold a bully down, at least as of yet. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what other things that people so, are doing, especially let, in school. Let me go on a quick, we're going to come back, we'll come to Nima and hear your thoughts on this. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing the effects of bullying, especially as adults. Uh, Nima, any experience on this? Several. <laughs> Too many to count. From home. From, I had two elder sisters who thought to stamp their authority with my, or my sharp tongue was, you know, get me beaten a few times, forced my hair down to lay her hair dressing and all of that. Was that and bullying? Yes, it was in some form, but my dad used to say, you're tough, you're tough. And when I got to secondary school and the bullies came, I just, that's what I was saying to BC when she was talking that there should be a line between being tough and being a bully. Because all those things that were done to me, I didn't repeat to others. Mm -hmm. But you, then if you see me coming up front, I give you the front that if you try it, without you doing anything to me. And when I got to, the, the one that I can't get over, I had a senior. She was like five years older than me in secondary. So she was supposed to be like the big sis, but she wasn't the um, school mother. She wasn't. And then, fast forward, I made Waik in one sitting, my first attempt. And it became a rave, and everybody started to talk about it. So my failing jab was now like time to get back. And every time I attempted to get into law, I didn't meet cut off, the news would filter and filter back. So once I got admission, my mom was out of excitement. You know the way I do people used to go to Edo people and go and celebrate. Oh, come again, oh, come again, you know, uh, she's gotten admission. And I had not even gone for registration. And one of them just came and said, Madam, why are you lying? Why are you lying? She can't get admission for law. Why would she? And so my mom came back, I said, I noticed all of this and I refuse to share it with you because my, my own way of addressing any form of talk down or bully is to prove you wrong. I won't even sit with you and have that mm -hmm. conversation. Because once I've heard it, I hate you coming to say, I didn't mean it like that. I meant like, mm, that I think is patronizing. So my tough nature can be sized up from afar <laughs> as bullying, but mm. that's how I've learned in life to deal with it. Mm. I call it a situation. So, you know, this morning we were talking and I was like, so do you now wait for the, the experience to just make you, to put, pull you down forever? What do you do with that experience? So you're experience? saying you dust it up and move on? No, I don't dust it up. I pick on the bully, mark them, and I deal with them in my own way, which when is you prove them, back them back. wrong, make them, it's their own words. Okay, let me take this call from Jigawa State. Bully. Dayo, are you there? He's bully. Hello, Dayo, are you there? Okay. You're live. Go ahead, please. Public secondary school in an open school, not in a, a day school, not a boarding school. And I was pretty younger then, I think I was probably an eight or nine. And we had these seniors who are close to 20 or 21 year old then, very big boys there that when you see them, you, you bow down and probably frustrate them. And they will draw a filling station for you, draw a car. I tell you to push the filling station on the wall to the, to the, the, the I mean, I mean, move the car to the filling station, mm -hmm. and they will tell you to go and buy something, probably a three or something. Those days when three naira was valuable, 
then from Green Era, they'll give you, they, they'll give you, they tell you to go and buy something of five Naira mm. with Green Era. That means you have to use your own money mm. to complete whatever they want to buy. And you push it, and if you don't come back quick and get the, whatever the Google or whatever they tell you to go and buy there, your assignment is you have to push that car to the petrol station. If it yeah. takes five hours, you have to do it. The following day, they will stick up and pick you in your class. So it was traumatizing there. Right. right. Thank you very much, Dara, for sharing your story. Mm -hmm. You see, my husband had shared something about his own experience, also bullying experience in school. And then somebody responded to him and said he disagrees with him because for him, bullying was part of the norm in the 70s and 80s that made us who we are today. Bad. That bullying was part of what made them the strong, confident boys they oh, are yeah. today. That, that because some people took a, um, mismanaged or maybe took advantage of it, that bullying was part of the culture that actually formed and raised the men we see today. A lot of good men that we see today. So they, 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 went, they had a back and forth <laughs> on that. On really, does it really toughen you up? Does it make you the responsible man? That today we lack a lot of men in, in, in that so regard. Let, let me answer by going to what Nima has said. So nobody believes that they are bullies. Nobody. There's nobody that will sit here and say, I am a bully. Except you are on a path of self-awareness and you are truthful about your process. Nobody. So what you see as tough, you are, I'm a tough person. I'm a hard person. If you give it to me, I give it back to you. I will not look for your trouble first, but if you look for my trouble, I will give you back. Bas goes. What you see as protecting yourself is actually bullying. It's actually bullying. It's only people who you have experienced that will tell you, you bully me. If ever you wanted to control somebody's opinion, mm. that it's my own, it, I'm the one that must have the last say. You are a bully. But you don't see it as bullying. You see it as, I have to impose my opinion. You have no right to impose your opinions on other people. If, if you have ever wanted to control another person's reaction to what you have done to them. So I tell you that you've hurt me. And instead of you to apologize and say, I did not mean you say, no, you can't feel that way. That's not what I meant. You are a bully. <laughs> but we do not see these things as bullying because we feel I'm an adult and I can, you know, control my so environment. you're emotionally bullying you're somebody, emotionally not physically. Bu yes, okay, you're emotionally then, bullying no, people. So, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. So... Somehow, for people who have gotten, whether the physical bullying, the emotional bullying, the sexual bullying, or that abuse in some way, find a way to translate it in other aspects of life. So you may not pick uh, that uh, physical bullying and then start beating everybody. Of course, you cannot beat the adult. They will give you back. You will start beating other people. But in the way you relate to them, in the way you try to control them, in the way you try to assert yourself, in the way you are in their faces, you are carrying out a form of bullying from your subconscious without knowing. Mm -hmm. That's where it comes when we are okay, relating so, as adults. So since hold on. If you have a relationship with somebody and somebody t tells you, do you know you actually bullied me? I think you should take a step back and ask yourself, I what agree. exactly did I so do? So if someone comes to me and says, you've done this to me, I immediately do apologize, Until, before, even before I do, I get to understand what you're saying. Because I believe that it is about perception. How you see what I do is different from what I intended or how you receive it, so I usually do that. But I am talking about a person going through bullying now, toughening up and saying, I will not put up with this anymore. So another person, you know, there's a circle around people bullied. So when you're in school, somebody attempts to bully you the first time, you go out, you cry. Another person who has been bullied just thinks, okay, this is my next victim. And then they try to bring it. You stand up, I'll face that person yourself. and confront that person, even if it is called bullying. So you, you bully, you're toughened up against a, a, a supposed bully, and now that's bullying? No, that, that's why you know, that, that's 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 I entered school at 16 plus 17. I had a young, a small looking friend. I had baby face. So it was so easy to bully me. Mm -hmm. And the, my roommates were, were, they were in their 20s. Mm -hmm. So every night, in the, in the morning and afternoon, when people were around, they, they act nice. Then the night, they take radio where I was sleeping and put it near, close to my ear, wow. pour the on my face when I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. When I go for lectures, wow. 
They soak my bread with water. There was nobody I could report to. If I go and report to the whole administrator, they will say, oh, she was dreaming. She was going to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, that was how I, 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 I lived throughout my hunger level. I told my friend, they said, you don't want to go back to school. I was even telling you, I don't want to go back to school. They said, it's a lie, you are lazy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go back to school. You will go back to that school. So oh, now it traumatized me to the extent that I found it very uncomfortable. Sleeping around people. Hmm. When I notice people are around, I have very difficult time sleeping, trying wow. to sleep. Hmm. It's, it's only when I'm alone I can uh, sleep comfortably. So, and I still remember, like it happened a minute ago. Before, I, I used to think that bullying, people are so bullied. And once you grow up, you will remember again. But hmm. it's so close to my brain, like it happened a minute ago. It's not something that, it's almost as traumatic as rape. Hmm. It's, hmm. it's not something that leaves somebody. I don't yes. know how, how I thank you. Be. Thank you, Dr. Moya. Because that's, that's where, where she went to is where I wanted to go to. Yeah. How it is affecting you today, today yes. in your relationships, in your in your growth, in your career. Oh, your personality. In, your personality. Yeah. How, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, Nima wanted to finish. Okay, so I wanted to talk about it moving from you trying to control someone. So we're talking about bullies, and I was using my case in question. I don't have any business controlling your point of view, but if you bring your point of view into my face and insist on it. I don't, I don't need to accept it. Mm -hmm. And I can react to it any way I see. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I believe that some people grow or deal with life issues. So you have been bullied, and this is how you want to face it. No, anytime you so much as smell the act coming, you have a way to confront it rather than avoid what it. What you are saying is that your response to bully can actually toughen you up or so weaken you. Up, so what, so what you up. Say. And it's not a bad thing. Okay. Build okay. a wall around yourself yeah. and put your boundaries on ground. Yeah, right. What you will not take, don't take it. If, it, if you don't, if you, like this poor, um, poor girl's story, if she didn't have to be within that environment, she could have walked away out, yeah. and take herself out. And right. so if, you, if she now insists okay. that she doesn't want to mix with such people anymore, it's not, yeah, it's not yeah. Yeah. So, so it can be, it can be helpful mm -hmm. and it can also, so it depends yeah, on how you, so how you respond to it. There's an uh, analogy that uh, I read a long time ago about just situations when they happen to you. So if you're a rock, that's a stone or an egg, and you put it in hot water. What happens to the egg? What happens to the rock? The rock doesn't change. It will still maintain what it, is. Is, uh, what it is on that hot um, stove, boiling water, and an egg will toughen up, the, you know, becomes harder. And there was one other thing, you know, you, that you put in hot water that will disintegrate. So it depends on who you are, what that, what that situation does for you. But what I'm hearing, right, is um, listening to Nima and um, BC, I personally feel that they have similar personalities. Um, and that, um, uh, in a way, I, not to call you bullies, but in a way, I've seen you know, what you described. Both of you have said you've had an experience and you found yourself having Tough to it. toughen up. Mm. You, know, you even tried to say, okay, maybe somewhat a bully. You said toughen up. I don't think there's anything wrong with toughening up. It's important to be tough. I mean, this is life. You're going to grow into an adult. You need to understand how to carry yourself and protect yourself. We are talking about bullies because we have bullies as adults. We are talking about people who have no respect or regard for the other person's feelings. That's what we're talking about. Those are bullies. And as children, when you can get away with physical abuse, beating people up, as adults, it will be maybe more verbal or emotional. But it's also, help, it's also helping me understand that some people do not know how to what to do with their strength. So I have this personality, I'm a strong personality. Does that always mean that the only way I can oh, express that my tough, strong personality is by imposing myself on people? Or is there a stronger. better way that I can be my strong, right. self-assertive um, type and still right. be respectful of others? Yeah, let me take success and hold it for a while. Success, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, I lost mm. that call. Let me go on a break. Yeah. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm told we have success on the phone line. Good morning, success. Are you there? Yes, good morning, ladies. You're live. Go ahead, please. I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Please, I would love to tell my story. Please. Um, Go ahead. 1997, my JSS1 was hell. Was hell. I remember over 20 years now, but I will never forget an incident. 
where a senior bully made me to kneel down under the bunk. Hmm. You know the size of a bunk. I had to kneel down there from 8 p.m. to the following morning. <gasps> till down. You know how I handled that issue? I escaped from that school, and that was how I ended my education in that school. The school was sent to the barbed wire. I'm not going to mention the name of the school. It was sent to the barbed wire. I had to dig under the barbed wire and escape. Wow. Luckily for me, I, I, I just wandered within the bush and got to the main road, and I, I saw the shop of an evil man selling something. I told the man my story. I ran home with my baby. The man gave me 300 naira then to take me. That just was happening in church. The man gave me 300 to take me home. How I got home, I didn't even know. All I know is that when they see students with their big day wear uniform, where are you going to? I told them I'm going to police staff college because that was where I was living. And that's how I got home. And when my mom saw me, what happened? I saw that I escaped from school. They wanted to kill me. If I went back to school, I would have died mm. in that school. Wow. Mm. Imagine I knelt down under the bunk. And they poured water under the bunk. Oh. The cold water. That was the height of it. But we had experienced a lot. Thank Sometimes. You. Thank you, Sophie, for so sharing so your fair. story. Oh, okay, I wanted yeah. to know how she... How it has, how how has that affected her personality, personality today? Now. You know, when, when you're talking about personalities, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I was telling that I went to Corona Primary School, and in Corona Secondary School, in fact, we were the first set. And our, professor, our, our principal there, Mrs. Olayemi, she made a rule that there's no bullying, because we were waiting for the second, the, the new GSS. We <laughs> were waiting, yes, yeah, for the seniors. We're going to bully, <laughs> because what I do, this is he told us, just clipped our wings. Don't you dare try it, because this is not that kind of school. But between, because I left Corona Primary School, Primary 5, right? And I was, because the Corona Secondary School didn't accept me immediately, because obviously, um, we could, I couldn't enter. They wanted me to do Primary 6. I had finished. So I went to Maryland Comprehensive School for about six semesters. I didn't even finish, like, just one semester. I didn't do two semesters there. Terms. One term. One term. And during that term, I the, the seniors, obviously, because you come into the classroom, you sweep public the classroom, school. public because the public school, you know, you sweep classrooms, you, you do this, you buy, buy stuff for your seniors. I mean, I saw people being sent and, and people being punished. And what I, the, my own coping mechanism at the time was to be a people pleaser. Like, let me just be the nicest junior. <laughs> so I was the one that would go and do it for them. What I'll go and buy it for them. What else do you want? I mean, I was just helping them. I said out of trouble. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't do anything to get anybody's attention. Yeah. And I think that helped. That, that, I wouldn't say it helped me, but... That stayed with me. Even when it became my coping mechanism. So even when I got into Corona, I was, though I was, I was a prefect, mm. but I guess it was easy for me to be a prefect because Very I nice. was the one that would go and do the head, the head, the, 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 the teacher. I was how the, can I help? How can I help? Yeah. I was always willing to be the class captain, to teach, mm. you know? So yeah. I was a nice, nice person. Yeah. So it was easy to give around all the responsibilities, not because I was the most brilliant and smartest, but I was always available to, to be responsible, to be used. Yeah. To be used. Wow. And I think that they kind of helped, that, I wouldn't say helped me, but oh as an goodness. adult, yeah. I found that I, I, I'm, I'm always a safe person. I like to just keep peace. Let, yeah. let everybody be quiet. Yeah. I don't like wahala. Yeah. Let, 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 let everything just go smoothly. I know now that there's some things, there's some attributes that um, we have that um, people like to call like, the, like a weakness. So I grew up hearing people say, I mean, I know someone who said to me, to be nice is to be weak. Don't be nice. Wow. So, um, and I have most of these attributes that society terms as weakness. But now as an adult, I realize it's a strength. So sometimes, you know, oh, you're a people pleaser, or you're, too, you're nice. You're, I understand that um, you need, to be, um, you, you need to, to be tough. You need to be strong. You should not be a doormat. No one should bully you. But there's nothing wrong with being nice. And, you know, we're talking about coping mechanism. There's nothing wrong in finding healthier ways to, to, to cope with um, a situation or a negativity going on around you. Here, some people will decide you, you're in a situation. I would never forget this thing. Me and a group of friends were traveling by road, and a policeman stops us. And they got into a fight with this policeman, like, arguing. He's like, show me your whatever. It became really rowdy. Mm -hmm. And these were mobile policemen on the road in the north, where you not see any another car in, in, in hours. And I just know, I could tell that this thing may degenerate. I am not the aggressive type. And I remember just being, I was able to calm everyone down. Even the policeman says, thank God for this one. Mm. You people thank God for this one. And I realized to be nice, to have that kind of uh, coping, uh, 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 that sort of demeanor, to have that sort of um, coping <clears throat> mechanism or tools, does not make me weak. weak. It just has found a better way to handle things that would degenerate yeah. because I don't have the personality where I'm, mm. um, you know, fighting someone. Let me take this call from Nicholas and I come to busy. Um, Nicholas, are you there? Yes. 
Good morning. Ma'am. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Okay, so I'd like to share an experience of a friend who yes. we um, helped in secondary school. She grew up in an environment where she does not speak up because her parents don't let her speak up at all. She just does whatever they say she should do. So when she was bullied in secondary school, those seniors, you know, and you know, errand, and then maybe you fought her at one point, maybe someone beats you up and takes it and they beat you up. She, she couldn't see anything. They had to take her to the MIO in command, but had to recover. Wow. So I'd like to just um, take you guys to talk about parents' upbringing, teaching your children how to speak up, teaching your children when to report, so, so, so these people can go and report to the school authorities. Mm. Thank you, Nicola. She's going to back to you know, something what that did yesterday. Because I went to command. I remember the first time I was in JS2, I was talking with my friend in the library, and the senior came and said, stop talking. I said, I'm just teaching her something. And she said, if you talk again. And I talked again, because I want to stand up. And, and she picked me, took me to her class. All five of the seniors put me in front of the class to carry... I think I, uh, what they call stood down and all of that in front of the class. And the teacher, two teachers taught them two subjects while I was there. And so the teachers saw the teachers you? They, I was, uh, the teachers were afraid of seniors wow. and would not say a word. What is cool? So if you, wow. if you had been grown up from home, taught, speak up and all of those toughness, my parents, freedom, I was opinionated. I shared my opinion freely from home. And then you get to school and the authority that you want to run to is looking why they are doing that to you. The authorities are free as well. Yeah. As well. Let me come to BC. I have a call. I'll come to BC. Good morning. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, can you hear Sam, me? you're live. Go ahead, please. Okay, please. I'm a first time caller. Welcome like to the show. show. Uh, you know, bullying is not only the school. Most of those big men with mm. their wives in their houses, oh. <coughs> what they do to their house help, in fact, you will be shocked. Listen to each other. My younger sister is one of the victims of what they did. The woman, if I had any small thing, they would tell you after eating, you go and grab this one. After doing all of those things, they would tell you, who do you have, you know? And one of the security inside was also a large victim. And when I tried to rescue the guy, in fact, there's a, there was a, a staff office close to their house. Then if you try to do something different that will cause us and us will just pick job. So it's not really not only in school, it's happening in those, most of those big men's houses. Okay. Is either dead or their wives. Mm. Thank, Thank you so you much. Sam. This be. Thank you, Sam. Go ahead, please. Nigeria is a bully. I've said that before. There's no place, there's no organization, there's no home you go to that you don't see one form of bullying no or the home. other. It's just it's just how we have in life and how we are trying to, everybody's trying to cope one way or the other, everybody's trying to survive one way or the other. But what we are saying now is that the bullying is no longer working for us. It mm -hmm. has affected us as children, as adults, as grandparents, as mm -hmm. a country. Mm -hmm. It has, you know, it keeps, we keep growing with it and keep finding ways to use it to defend, what we call defending ourselves most of the time, we end up bullying another person. So mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong in being nice. Being nice is good. Even me and auntie here that we are the bullies on this table. We are nice people on a normal day. It's good. But even as you're being nice, you still have to learn and find a way to create boundaries so that people don't use that mm. against you. But That's I have my Hold on, hold on. Also, being tough is good. Mm. Everybody cannot be yeah. a soft spoken like Miriam. Sometimes she needs ginger, and I'm yeah. there to give her yeah. the ginger. I, give I need myself <laughs> my ginger. You know, I'm just saying. Hold on, hold on. Our personalities are different for a reason. Mm. We are not all meant to be the same way. But however you find your personality, mm. how do you relate to other human beings? Yes. How good are you to other human beings? Very are you a good. human being to another human being, Thank or do you, you see them as objects to be used and tossed away? That's where the problem is. So if you are tough as I personally have an assertive personality. I was born that way, and I'm not going to apologize to anybody for that. Yeah. But how do I relate? If you come close to me, how do I relate to you? Mm. Do you have any good thing or bad thing to say? How do I make you feel good. at the end of the day? That's what makes me a human being. And not when whether I, mistake, I raise my voice yeah, or speak the way I speak. That's how. That's my makeup. Mm. And when I make a mistake, how do I, do I accept to, yes. that I've made a mistake? I'm willing to change. Am I on a path of self-awareness to understand that I want to be a better human being? Yeah. That's where we're going to, and that's what yeah. we're heading to yeah. with this bullying. Yeah. There, there's something I also noticed Have about... Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Stay with us. Don't bully more. We'll right Don't bully more. <laughs>
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We're still discussing issues of bullying, especially as it affects adulthood. And we'll be taking some messages on, um, on our social media. Who likes to start? So, so let me okay. relax the music says, my bully in secondary school, unfortunately, is late now. A retired general came to my office and I escorted him to the car. And my bully is in his, was in his car. He's a welder working at his site. He was a general. And I went back to the office and the general told me that someone knows me among his workers. When I got to the, back to the car, I, it was my secondary schoolmate who was an iron bender. And he told the general that I used to be very brilliant. That was the day I knew I was bullied for just my intelligence. Mm. Mm. That happens as well. Mm. Yeah, so Corey Williams says, bullying is not strange. I was bullied in my first admission at Delta State University by cult boys, Axemen. I was beating black and blue. Uh, a busy lad says, no regards for another person's feeling is the key and the major feature of a bully. Yes. Uh, Lotus Sunflower says, so true. Uh, the society normalizes bullying. Imagine going home to tell your parents who were beaten and they tell you to go back and retaliate. Corey Williams says, I went to Unilag and AA boys wanted to bully me again. So I finally joined the new black movement. Ooh. Somebody screamed, yay. He says, I joined to protect myself. I had to do it. I haven't killed anyone. It was ne a necessity. Mm. Um, so. Bliki says, that's my own summary is that we generally lack emotional intelligence. We rarely consider people's mental health and emotional well-being. I had a family member who joined uh, cult just because he Protecting. wanted to stay away from Bullies. So that's a fallout. And that of ended his bullying. life. Yeah. Wow. So that's a fallout of bullying. That ended his when life. When you're bullied as a child, you want to protect yourself and you yeah. then join this group. So yeah. Go ahead, Mimara. Yes, yeah, Samuel Larry says, good program, great topic. May the Almighty God continue to bless you for bringing up this very relevant and timely topic. Bullying should be condemned at all levels. Or more, needless bully me a lot at my site, building Onile. project. And sometimes that discourages me from going there. Wow. All right, what we were talking about mm. the mm. fact that bullying doesn't end in it. Yeah. Doesn't children. It translates it to adults. economic also. Uh, Moyelu, I think our last caller. Good morning, are you there? Good morning, ma. Good morning, you're live. Thank you. Yesterday, I actually tried to call in and thank God for this topic oh. today. Um, I tried bullying in secondary school and uh, I didn't really. Um, take it as a big um, challenge. I always look through it and then one way or the other, I ended up becoming friends of those bullying me. Mm. It just made me wiser. And um, most of the times I discovered, after befriending these seniors, you just discover that they also have challenges. Some of them is from home. Yeah. Some were bullied and they're trying to just pass it on, like I want to do the same thing to another Person. And now as an adult, how has this helped me? It's helped me to understand that people are different and we handle people differently. Yes. So it just made me wiser. And when I try to find myself in a situation that I might want to be bullied, to stand up for myself, make friends with the person, or treat them differently. So, so thank that's you. people management also. Yeah. That's another way. So it teaches you other skills. So yeah, just right. like Nima has said from the beginning that you can respond to these things in different ways. Yeah. But there are some people who are fairly they weak and maybe they they, they, they are not able to understand or even uh, be able to um, interpret this bullying in a way that will help that is beneficial to them. Okay, uh, uh, Mariah, right. every uh, child blossoms differently. Yeah. Some people mm. are, are, are is it um, late, bloomers? late bloomers? Others are fast. So be, when bullying comes in, it disrupts the ability of that child to mature Absolutely. into their personality. Yes. It just cuts it short. Also, the bullies themselves need help. Yes. Mm. We always focus on the results of the bullying and not talk about why the bully is doing what they are, what, what they are, why they are doing what they are doing. Because the truth is, someone who resorts to external power, you want to bully to show that you're strong, is because you are lacking something within. You have a low self-esteem in yourself. You feel inferior. And fact. how to show that you are superior, you are, you are forcing yourself to show that I'm bigger than you. Mm -hmm. you, don't, if you. If you have strength, you don't need to shout about it. You don't, it, it shows, it exudes with whatever you do. Thank but you. when you constantly see a child who is trying to, is it an adult who will say, do you know who I am? Before you say two sentences, you know do that. you know who I am? You know that one is suffering from uh, uh, so, attention, he's an attention junkie, he just wants to be seen. So let's also pay attention as teachers in the classroom, as children, as their parents, when you see your child is tending towards being a bully, find out what is wrong with that child. What is that thing that they are lacking? And start solving it from mm -hmm. there. If all hands can be on deck, 
I think Fantastic. We, I think, I think there's a mistake we we'll always make where because you we describe being the bully as the strength. Mm. So the one who is bullied mm. is always seen as, as the, the weak, weak one, but it's not always that way. But yeah. the bully can, is the weak person, is the weak person yeah. and needs to be worked So on. there's the extreme case that we didn't exhaust today, which is how it leads you to seeking validation, protection, and all of that from different Outside. means. And then worst case is cultism. You see, talked about how it led to that. This one, I saw clearly while I was, um, you know, parliamentarian in the university and all of those things. I saw how seeking relevance got boys. And I, I sort of got my younger brother out of that immediately when we were in 100 level. The moment I noticed he was being cornered and asked to pay, buy credit for somebody, I took it to a student affairs trade off. Me, I defaced the issue straight, but he I didn't know, know how. Yeah. He was saying to me, So, how do I sustain paying? So, it, there's a more depth, it's deep, deep, um, deeper. Mm -hmm. Even I, growing up, I mean, I was, I was, I, I, would, I wasn't physically bullied. But verbally bullied by somebody who was pretty short. I mean, she was way shorter than I was. <laughs> she used to make me feel like I was so tall and I was yeah, this tall, langa, skinny. Langa, and I was also so tall and they call me, Yeah, they called me all sort of names that when, even when I was I was growing up, I never wanted to wear heels. Wow. I just wanted to stay, I wanted to just keep wearing flats. Wanted I, to say, short, I wanted to be short. I didn't want to wear heels. I know that thing. You know, okay, I, I know got that, that feeling. I got that same bullying. And I remember I used to slouch. Yeah, My God. mom made it a duty. I'll be, she would say it, you know, you're a tall girl, and a tall girl what looks best way? when she um, stands Sounds upright. Tall. And when the talking was not entering, when I'm slapped, I'll just hear a slap on my back. Bow, <laughs> bow. <laughs> so I just knew to always stand <laughs> So yeah. she helped me with that because yeah. I got lots of that. Yeah. You're too tall. So Giraffe. what do you think was happening to that mm. young girl who was trying to make you feel bad? So based on what you now, said, now it's because you know. now it's because she was short. Mm -hmm. now, now I know. Now you then know. I was like, I was like, I wanted to be so short. Yeah, she wanted to make you feel bad. Yeah, about the insult and flaunt it. Have you seen the young ones that we look at now? You see them pretty cute girls, and then they will tell you, I don't like my eyes. I'm like, do you know? how beautiful oh, your eyes are. Yeah. There was one girl in class that said they yeah, don't like yeah, yeah, yeah. So when somebody calls, called me Lekpa, because I used to be so small, and you use this, I'll tell you that's what you're working at. You're trying to lose weight to get to me. Yes. And I've been doing it since I was small. I'll tell you, I looked in the mirror, I am slaying. Yeah. Till tomorrow. Okay. That's the personality. Playing a larger. Yeah. Okay, we have to run. That's all we can take on this. Let me go on a quick break. I mean, I think we'll be able to do justice to this. Yeah. Um, the idea is that we all adults, we've learned from our bullying experiences. The most important thing is that let's not pass it on to our younger ones yeah. behind us. Sure. We've learned from it. Those that interpreted it badly, those positively. Either way, bullying is bad because it's the bully that is the weak one. Yes. Not yes. the victim. Not the, yes. the victim is the stronger one. Yes. Let us ensure survival. that we reverse this. Yes. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, how do you attract billions? for your business. That's our next topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us, moving on to other segments. So as the year is running to an end, so many of us are thinking of how to have a better finance coming in the coming year. On the show today, we have a strategic finance expert and founder, Africa Finance Strategic Hub, Oluwa Toyin Arelekbo, to enlighten us on how we can attract billion investments into our business in the coming year. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello, madam, are you there? Yes, thank you so much. Good, good to have you. Everyone. We, really, we really wanted to have you on Zoom, but I think we're having some connection issues. So it's good to have you on the phone either way. Um, so the Thank year so the year is coming to an end, and many of us are planning. We're wrapping up for this year, and we're hoping to have some financial backing coming the next year. We're hoping to um, get some exposures into opportunities internationally to grow our businesses either within the Naira or the dollar. Mm -hmm. So what um, tips can you share with us to position our businesses to attract billions in the coming year. Thank you so much, um, Moyo. I'm, I'm so Moriah. glad to be here this morning, um, to be calling in. Yes. Well, before we start, I would like to lay the foundation because when it comes to issues about finances, if the foundation is not good, if the foundation is not strong, there's always a problem. Right. So the first thing is to start with what happened in 2021. You need to review your business. You need to review where you are in 2021 and start planning for 2022. 
and to put in place the right structures. Now, in terms of looking at what happened in 2021, did you set goals? Did you set financial goals for the year? In terms of your business, what were the things you set out to do? Your customers, um, your revenue, your expenses, and the bottom line, which is the profit. So what were the goals you set out to do? Because if you don't get this right and put in place the right structures, then going into 2022 will be like, you know, just driving without knowing the direction. So it's right. good to evaluate what happened in 2021 so that it can lay the foundation for 2022. And another thing I want to highlight is that as a business owner, even as um, individuals, you know, we need to set out goals because there is no way we can attract opportunities if we don't position ourselves. And as a business owner, how do you position yourself? You need to look at your business model. You need to have a valid and viable business proposition. And you know, so many people talk about business models. What it means is just how are you going to generate money? How are you going to make money in your business? And you can't make money in your business if there's no problem that you are solving. Mm. A problem you are solving that customers are willing to pay for. You know, that is the starting point. Because if you don't have a viable business proposition, there is no way you can attract investors. The second thing you need to look at is, do you know your numbers? Understanding your business model. Do you know your numbers? Do you have the financial and operating metrics? That is, do you understand what is driving your business? Do you understand who your customers are? Do you know how they are going to reach out to you? Do you know how you are going to reach out to them as well? Have you evaluated what, you, what resources that you require to achieve the business goals? What do you need? What right. are the resources, both financial and also in terms of network? Who are the partners that are going to support you? Because if you don't have all this in place, there is no way right. you can attract investors. All right. So, but because because of time, let me let me. So, just let, let's assume a business has all these you've identified. We have a proper structure. You have the financial numbers. You have a problem you're solving. The, a, a business owner will say, "Where do I find these investors? Do I go online? Do I go to LinkedIn? How do I know where they are? What do I do to find them?" Okay. So there are so many opportunities now. Um, let me talk briefly about um, the stage of your business because that will also determine the type of funding that you require, uh -huh. right? Are you just starting out your business? In which case, you are still trying to understand the, I mean, at the ideation stage, right? Because the type of investment you will require for thought will be different from a situation where you started and you are scaling. You already have customers and you are generating revenue, right? And whether you have also, um, your business is also established, the type of investment you require and where to get the investment will be different. For instance, if you're just starting out, right, you can have access to um, grants, right, because you're still starting your ideas. Um, you can look for angel investors, and we have some of them in Nigeria as well. You can look at your family and friends. However, if your business has started uh, picking up, you know, there are other opportunities like um, uh, programs like incubators and accelerators. Yes. Now, one of such is the Y Combinator. This is where um, Paystack, I mean, we all, we've all heard about Paystack. They actually started with this, right? A situation where, you know, um, they started with accelerator program where their ideas um, were reviewed with them, and they were, I mean, they, they got some guidance that helped them, you know, before they were able to scale to the extent where they, they, they were able to sell the business at um, over $200 million, right? So you need to understand the stage of your business and what is required at every stage. Right? Because when you understand that, then you know what, where to look for the funds. Yes. 
whether right. you need to okay. go through... Let me put a few more questions in for you. All go right, Matt. Let's um, stay on new startups for a bit. Um, okay. How do you advise that a new startup minimizes costs, overhead costs, because of, you know, these are inflation rates and um, the rate of the dollar? What are some of the steps that they can take so that they are not spending so much and would be able to at least mop up a little profit? Okay. Okay, so um, what I we advise for startup is that, you know, they need to look at um, the cost structure. What I mean is, by the time you understand the product you want to sell, for instance, right, at the start of the business, it is not advisable that, you know, you go and um, maybe rent an office in Victoria Island, for instance, mm. when you don't even have customers, you're still trying to gain customers, right? You need to start small and scale very fast. Look at your cost structure. Um, how many staff do you need at the start? Do you need to hire an accountant at the beginning, or you can afford um, some of the things or the processes that you have to do, right? Look at the staffing. Do you need so many staff at the beginning? Look at where um, the location of the office, your rent, the location you are presently. Can you afford it at the start, right? The resources and the raw materials that you require, you also need to look at that as well. Is it possible for you to get um, other raw materials locally, right? Can you look at that? What are the other sources, you know, in which you can reduce the cost of operation? So these are some of the ways that, you know, businesses that are just starting, right, can look into, especially the cost structure. Because if you're just starting, you need to start small. You don't have to accumulate so much cost. Right. Because at the start of your business, right, if, you, if your cost structure is so high, it takes a longer time okay. for you to recoup. Right. And okay. also, I mean, before you're, you're able to make profit. Okay. So you need to start lean. Look right. at the resources that you require and ensure that, you know, you are not, um, it has to say that you, you don't want to live above your means. Exactly. It also applies All to right, let me, let me get a few more questions right. in for you. Yeah. Go ahead, Ma Ma let's go back okay. to um, attracting billion-dollar investments. I just love the sound of that. And recently I've been hearing a lot about what you just mentioned, the incubator, accelerator, and... Um, I know a lot of Nigerian businesses who, for, for whom these um, terms are quite foreign. And they're wondering, yes, I would like to scale up my business from this Naira-making small-time business to a dollar attract, a billion dollar attracting invest, um, um, business. What are the things, how do I, first, how do I find these um, incubators, these accelerators that we're talking about. How do I find this group of people? Who are the, where, how should I position myself to be attractive to even these, um, you know, uh, interventions so that I can have an access to investors who are willing to put monies, you know, billion dollars in a business like mine? Okay. Thank you so much for that question. Um, there's something called social capital, right? In, in doing business, right, you have the financial capital, you have the social capital, and you have the time capital. Now, when it comes to the social capital, that's where networking is important, right? Now, you need to look for um, institutions that um, give opportunities. For, I mentioned about the Y um, combinator at the start of the discussion. There is also the Founders um, Institute in, in Nigeria, right, that supports, um, in, I mean, that supports businesses. You have the Illuminati Foundation, right? You have Leap Africa, where you can even start small, depending on the type of business um, that you're doing. Now, when you look for this um, network, right, there are some of them that, that you can find through LinkedIn, there is also the Tekedia Capital, where they are also looking at businesses where they can invest in. So you need to join network of um, um, of institutions that we open, I mean, open you up to these opportunities, right? You can't stay at home, 
within, I mean, in the confines of your home and think that opportunities will come. So you need to look for networks that will position you, right? Like right. I mentioned, there's Y Combinator. You can um, search them on the internet, apply, right. and they start guiding you. There's Tony Elumilu Foundation, right. you know, where you can get seed capital. And there are other ones like uh, Leap Africa as well, right. you know, that you can start with, okay. right? And as you start, they, they, you get introduced to the bigger institutions, right, that mm. can support your business Fantastic. and um, get you uh, the funding that is required. Let me throw in one more question. Go ahead, okay. a, a busy large says on YouTube, why do Nigerians like putting the challenges costs that they have in their businesses that they open because they said they can handle the business on end consumers and customers? It's like a carpenter saying, oh, God, we're going to need ladder na extra money, you know, that kind of talk. And then people will rush an open business in expensive office, put the cost of affordable service and their, on their customers because they want to pay expensive mm. rents and live large. Yeah. Did you hear me, ma? Oh, I think that the first part, so, the line... Okay, so our, our a viewer is asking that why do Nigerians like putting cost of business that, you know, they could avoid, you know, and that makes business expensive, such as an expensive office a very good location and all of those costs that yeah. they cannot immediately bear. Yeah, but let me let me let me let me, their... let me extract a question from that um, mm -hmm. observation from our, our viewer. So if I am if I'm a business owner and I have a high end product trying to attract a high end customer base, and I think by having my office in the Victoria Island or a Lekki will attract the kind of customers I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, my cost structure will be high, obviously, mm -hmm. but I expect that the product I'm selling is high end and the customers I'm looking for. So how do I, therefore, re find a way to get the kind of customers I'm looking for, but also minimize my cost? Mm -hmm. so, and so, and so that it's affordable to some other customers, too. Mm. Okay, well, when it comes to uh, business um, management and running, right, you need to look at the niche, the type of customers, <laughs> and the type of product, right, and the location. These are some of the factors that will, um, will determine how much you are going to charge because you are in business primarily to make money, right? Now, understand the customers you are um, you're providing services to, right? For instance, um, the, if I use a very simple example, if you go to a mall to buy fabric, right, that's a very simple example, the cost of that fabric will be different Right, you obviously higher than when you go to um, Balogo Market or you go to Jumata. Now, because they are, I mean, the location in a mall, they have to pay service charge. They have to um, pay, I mean, service charge. They have to pay for um, the, the the agent, right, or the customer service person, you know, that is attending to the customer. So there's a premium. Now, if you want to do that. You need to look at location, for instance, that you have to um, cite your business before doing that. You can't go and do that in another location. Let, let, let me give an example. Um, you set up that kind of shop, right, with AC, with all the things in a motion, for instance. I mean, um, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Without considering the, the niche, without considering the need of the people, right? The demographics of people that you have over there. So these are some of the things that you have to consider. Now, when you understand the customers you're serving and their requirements, then you have to tailor your service. And those people are ready. For instance, you go to a mall, you know you're going to pay premium for that extra service that you're enjoying. So you, as a business owner, you need to understand the need of your customers where right. they are, who okay. you want to serve, right. right? You can't provide a premium service to a low-end customer base. It won't work. And let me use another example. I mean, I, I've worked we have in telecoms, right? <laughs> yes. Let me give that, uh, that final example. Right. You know, you have different customer base. You have the one that stay as you go. You have the VIP customers. You have the VIP customers mm -hmm. that on their birthday, Right, you have to take gifts to them. You give them special treatment. These are the ones that are spending maybe one million, two million on a monthly basis. 
you can't offer the same service to another yeah, customer person. that we just go and buy 500 naira required card. <laughs> so you need to understand the need of your customer right, so yeah. that you can tailor on your service, right? right? Thank Once you. you understand that, then you'll be able to manage your cost according right. to the needs of your customers. Right. And you, bottom line is that you have to recover your cost. Thank you very much, Mr. Luta Oluwa Toyin. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for joining us this morning. We appreciate your thoughts on this. And um, it was interesting to learn that the truth is that reduce the cost, position yourself. These people, the organizations that are willing to offer you money, start up money, mm -hmm. and then to support your businesses, you just have to ensure that your numbers are right, mm -hmm. your business have structure is right, and ensure that you have, um, you're able to um, demonstrate the profitability of the business. Therefore, you attract these big spenders. So we, we hope, we wish, um, thank you very much. We just hope our business owners have, have taken a lesson from this and would improve their business come 2022. We're going to go on a very short break. When we come back, we announce our winners for the next Africa themed Christmas gift. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Christmas is in the air, so we're having an African-themed Christmas. That's why we have a set, beautiful set. And we have a calabash. <laughs> tomorrow, I can't wait till tomorrow, we're going to dress up. I'm Yay. looking excited for that. But first, we're going to pick our next winner. So as we said, we, uh, remember our viewers had put together money, our fans put together money, and we got 880,000 naira in total. And we've been giving out 50,000 naira since the beginning of of December, we started this 12 days of Christmas and we'll be giving out 50,000 out to all our fans. So today we're going to pick the next winner. In fact, we're picking two winners today. The first person is going to be uh, for the 50,000 naira, and the next person is going to be win a gift from Eleganza. So we have a suitcase, a really cute suitcase, and three uh, bowls of casserole bowl, casserole bowls for, for, for kula, our... Kula. It's a kula? Yeah. Kula. <laughs> Three casserole dishes. That's an African thing. Kula. Three, <laughs> kula. 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 Three um, uh, casserole kula. dishes and uh, a nice suitcase <laughs> to one person, and then one person gets a 50,000 naira. So two different winners today. Thanks to Eleganza for sponsoring yes, us so. some of these gifts, and thanks to the ladies. Yes, let's pick. Who's, I'm, I'm not Ooh. going to pick. Let me pick. Have you yeah, not yeah, picked? Yeah, first time. Okay, you've not picked. Yeah, yeah. Ah, but you're shaking for yourself. Yeah. <sighs> I'll pick the second one. You see, you pick another day. Okay, yeah. I can shake you and shake somebody. Yeah, no, you give it to someone nah, to pick. I don't have much ah. time, Auntie. Mm. Pick one. Mm. Pick in your gift. Mm. Is it your gift? <laughs> okay, I got one. All right, <laughs> let's see who that is. Gift Bella Celestine. Woo! My Woo! junior Woo! sister has hernia and she's due for surgery, but we keep postponing it due to financial reasons. Wow. And I see her complain wow. of stomach pain every day. Oh. It will be a thing of joy for me and my household if we can get this financial so support. It will definitely be a Merry Christmas for my family. I love her very much. I will send pics of uh, pictures during and after the surgery. Thank you. you I am so Keeps excited. Bella Celestine. Yes, Keeps Keeps Bella, Bella Celestine. Celestine. Congratulations. 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 So we're going to be sending her 50,000 naira. naira. Let's pick one more person that's going to get the Eleganza gifts. Okay. Ah, but this person is money. No, no. Present. This no, one's our phone. phone. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is that let's well, just These people are for, these are for those for the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the next caller, the person that calls us right now. While we're waiting for that caller, let's take a few messages from the bullying. I know people have sent lots of messages. Yes, yes. 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 so ahead, we have this quite a long one. So um, she says, I was, Amuli says, I was bullied from different angles. Um, bullied for who my father was in government that I even resulted to not saying he's my dad. Oh. I also think I got to resist his name so I can have genuine friends. Wow. Bullied for breaking up with an ex that he literally spilled lies about me. Bullied for non-conformity and speaking up, especially in religious settings. Her daughter was bullied in a school here in the UK. I'm very conversational, and so it was very easy to discuss with her, something I always do since she was born. She even advised on how to deal with the bully, and we reported to the school teachers who were amazed at her level of understanding in saying she feels the bully has no understanding of what she did. I got bullied during NYSC but then trying to sexually harass me that made me run away, as in run away from the organization and the whole of Nigeria. 
Mm. I also saw one of my domestic staff in Abuja being bullied by a close family friend, mm. and I called the police on them. Mm. Um, we are all humans. I do not condone any such thing around anyone. We are all humans. Employees and employers are all human. There's bullying still going on, but I see that as I mature and keep discovering myself, I ask the question, what can be deficient in this bully that is encouraging this person to act in such wow. a manner? Wow. That was a, that was a very, 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 very yeah. interesting mm. story. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we're still waiting for a call. So Bill Kiss, uh, Morenike says, honestly, Obi it, it comes back to bite us. It took us long to identify bullying and call it what it is. We have enabled bullies for far too long. Mm. Lotus Sunflower says, not every behavior is bullying, too. Some people throw the word around loosely when they lack confidence mm. or are soft when they meet someone with a strong personality. Mm -hmm. Let's put that out there. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. We got a caller! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Patricia from Magoda in the building! Yeah. 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 Patricia, are you there? I'm here. Yeah! yeah. 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 So you are a winner of this really nice, cute traveling bag and this casserole dishes. Congratulations wow. to you. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, thanks, to, oh, thanks to the guys oh, for giving us this gift. We're so happy. And as I said, lots of people have been calling in to support. So yeah. tomorrow, we're going to be getting gifts from Ida Small. I'm pretty yes. excited about that. So mm. if, you want to, if you want to get a gift, stay tuned tomorrow. Call the show. You just might get a gift. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get tomorrow. Know. We'll wait till tomorrow. But I mean, the idea is that lots of people have been calling us to support this course. <laughs> because in the next few weeks, we're going to be giving out lots and lots of gifts. Okay. So we're so happy. Congratulations to Patricia. Ladies, anything you want to say before we wrap up? I'm thinking, I think I have to support this course. Ah! House of BC. Yes. I work out the modality. Oh, so I'm fantastic. Safe. I'm loving it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. That's all we can take on the show. It's Christmas. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>